but just like Man City, there's a, you know what I mean? There's a, there's that block. You know what I'm saying? So they're actually worse than us, PSG. <laughs> <laughs> We're almost as bad as each other. But... So yeah, man, I'm not too sure. Um, Listen, my oil club can't relate to that mental block. Been there, done it, <laughs> won it. Yeah, but even with Chelsea, I think Chelsea have won it when they, when they're least expected to win it. Like Chelsea had great teams in like 2004 or five, True, and yeah. they didn't win it. And then they went and won it when you least expected it. And the same thing happened again. So I think that might happen to City. I think while we're like one of the best you think teams, you might be off the pep leaves. We might not win it. You we might could well win it when he leaves. I think with Pep, there's so much because he's like a football genius. He like overthinks everything. Like there's a meme yeah. and it shows like an arrow to like from the trophy, like in a straight line. And it's got Pep and he's doing all circles and he can't. And I feel that's what it's like. It's like he's overthinking everything, you know? Yeah. And that's why when we play the best teams, we actually look better because there's less sort of overthinking. Every year you went out, you went out to the team that weren't expected to beat you. It was Leon or yeah, the, yeah, uh, yeah. Real Madrid, yeah. Tottenham. Spurs. It's always a team that you think, even, even with Real Madrid, that first leg should have been... Oh, he should have oh, like, yeah, he should have wrapped it up that should And that's insane. why I refuse to blame Pep because I will blame Pep for Chelsea. That was his fault. I'll blame <laughs> him for Leon because he changed the formation a bit. Yeah, and yeah. Didn't know what they were doing. But when it came to that game, he set up to win that first game about 10 nil, <laughs> and the players just didn't do it. So I think that was a bit of a collapse at the back. What I would yeah. say about that game is in the league, it's kind of helped us because. City had not come back from 2-0 down since 2007. And since that Madrid game, we've done it three times. So uh, That's fair. No, that's fair. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I agree with you, Jan. When it comes to your manager, I think that, listen, someone put a, a, a picture up the other day of his, um, his league finishes since he's been a, a first-team manager. And it's literally like first most of the time, a couple of seconds and a third. And it's phenomenal. But then there's always the argument. When someone said, you can't argue he's not the greatest manager of all time. Everyone has a different standard. I, mm. My caveat to Pep being the greatest is I haven't seen him go, in, go to a fallen giant or a smaller club and build them into the best team in Europe. We've seen we've seen Jose do that. We've seen Sir Alex Ferguson do that. He almost, you could argue he did it twice. What he did with Aberdeen was, act, in some respects, more impressive than what mm. he did. Doing what he did with Aberdeen in the 80s in Scotland is, in some respects, more impressive than what he built United into in the 90s, in, in some people's eyes. So there's always different reasons, but I would never deny Pepsi, Pepsi my top five greatest managers of my lifetime and maybe of all time at club level. But I do think that pressure follows him around in relation to the, the Champions League. I think it's, you know, like in the back of his mind, I've got to do it because people... And he wants... The thing is with someone like Pep, he may not say it out loud, but he wants to be regarded as one of the greatest of all time. I think he has that in him. I actually think one of the things that hindered Fergie um, in terms of that, those, you know, him, I think what he's done is great, but he wanted more. He wanted that third Champions League because at the time, nobody had three, I believe, uh, managers. I might be wrong, but I don't think anybody had three. He wanted to be the first to have it. Sometimes you chase that so hard, it becomes a stumbling block. In those early 90s, Fergie was doing it. It was almost like we were the, sometimes we were the best team by a country mile, but we just like came unstuck at the wrong times. And I think that Pep's got to learn to do that. And I agree with you. I think he'll leave with more league titles, more FA Cups, more League Cups. And then you'll find the next manager comes in, comes third in the Premier League, but wins the goddamn Champions League. It'll almost be like the, the pressure's been relieved and he goes in and does it. But yeah, I mean, City, the thing is though as well, like I, I want to ask you this question, Jan. Do City need to win it to be considered one of the greatest European sides of all time? Do you believe that you need the Champions League to enter that conversation? I think you need every trophy, I do. Um, but at the same time, what I do say is, like, even though City have been good enough to win it, I think, I don't think we were always good enough to win it. People are at, like, you know, from the start of this Shape Mansour era that we were good enough to win it. We weren't at the beginning. It took us a while. We were new to the competition. We had to learn our lessons. But I think the past, under Pep, for quite a lot of Pep's time, we've been good enough to win it. Um, and I think we are improving year on year. So I think it's a matter of when, not if we win it. But um, it's just, I think it's going to be when when people least expect it. I think it's not going to be when everyone's like, oh, City are going to win it. They're favourites. 
because I think the pressure of us being favourites doesn't help us. Um, and I think it allows other teams like Chelsea, for example, they went into that final under no real pressure. They had a newish manager. Um, everyone was saying City are better, you know, as, as, a, as a team. And they kind of, it took a lot of the pressure off Chelsea. So it's kind of, I feel like we're more likely to win it as an underdog than as the favourite. So if we went up against the Real Madrid, I think City would be more likely to win it than if we play someone that we should be beating easily. So yeah. Well, I want to say something. I'm gonna say something. <laughs> I I don't know. I hear what you're saying, and I hear what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't think if you do not win it with Pep, it's I can get see better. struggling for mm. let's say I don't want to put like an infinite amount of time on it because you oh, yeah. maybe with it. But I say for the next 10 years after Pep, I don't think I can't see you win it. Not because your club isn't good or you haven't got mm -hmm. great players or you haven't got a great structure as a club. But tr the transition from such a manager like Pep oh, Guardiola yeah. Yeah. is going to be so difficult yeah. to navigate, in my opinion. It's so hard to navigate that. I, I, Trying I, I to win in Champions don't. League while that's happening, mm -hmm. it's going to be... It's, it's just not happening. So I feel like Pep... Pep needs to get you this Champions League. You know, you know, you know what, though, KJ? So I know you're going to say something as um, well, uh, 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 Tom, but where I disagree... Is that isn't typically how football works. Real yeah. Madrid just won it <laughs> when they were supposedly in transition and shouldn't be doing it. Chelsea have won it twice, once with a manager that was sacked a few months later. I don't think it actually... Football doesn't always work in, in that obvious manner yeah. and direction. I, I just feel like... I do feel that like the only reason they're not winning it so far under Pep, I think Pep feels too much pressure. And yeah. I think it's getting to him. Because some, as Jan said, some of the decisions that he has made in, in some of these games has been crazy. But sorry, Tom, you were going to say something, mate. Sorry. The, the thing is, when you're looking at the transition of Manchester City after Pep, the reason why I don't think it'll be an issue is Manchester City has such a... Their, their culture is built around Pep now. So when Pep goes, I'm sure they've already got a short list of the three managers who they'll bring in, who they'll look at bringing in, who will instantly play a style very similar to what they've done. They're one trying of, to build that club culture. You know, it's just to let you know. They're trying to build that club culture around... <laughs> Brendan Rodgers is actually on that list, though. Uh, no, he's he's going to gonna be free <laughs> soon as well. Yeah, and Brendan Rodgers. Oh, my club. Oh, my God. <laughs> See, Do you know what's crazy, though, there. that you say that? Because if you actually watch Man City from kids all the way up to the, the women's team, mm. they all play the same way. Like, yeah, when yeah. I watch the women, I'm like, they're just like the men. They have hundreds of chances and they miss most of them. But no, really, like, uh, it's one of them. They play the same way. So, yeah, do you maybe see potentially Man City <laughs> recruiting from within than necessarily going away um, and finding, like, some guy who can also play Pep's football? Do you reckon that might be a thing? See, I don't really know because since the shakes come in, the plans changed a few times because I know originally they wanted Vieira um, hmm. to, like, yeah. work alongside Pellegrini and then become potentially the next manager. And then when Pep came in, it changed slightly. Then it looked like it might be Arteta because he brought Arteta in. Um, but I don't think they're ready yet. I'd mm. love to see company in the future, but he's not ready yet. Yeah. Um, but I'd love that in the long-term future. But I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. I would have thought maybe there's only really two that I would have associated with Pep where it's like they could come in and I think take over without causing us too much damage. And one of them was Ten Hag, like you say, and the other one is Enrique. So yeah, I don't yeah, yeah. know if we'll get him because mm -hmm. Ten Hag's not going to join City now. So I don't know, but you never know with City. They'll already know. Yeah, yeah. and that is why, I think Terry will agree, that is why I wanted Ten Hag so much. Because yeah. it just elim it eliminates... <laughs> Like him ever going there and doing absolute madness. <coughs> yeah. like... well, that, that was that was one of the reasons why when Pep and Klopp respectively went to Liverpool and Chelsea, I was so gutted because it meant categorically they were never going to be Man United managers. Yeah. You know, it's one of the reasons why back, back when you guys first got money, well, it was I think he was already the manager when you got money. When Mark, Mark Hughes, Hughes went to Man yeah. City, th at that point, again, younger people won't remember this. They'll just remember him as a dead manager. Um it, it, it's one of those things where you, you're you're in this situation where you sort of think to yourself, well, he he, he was tipped to go on and be a very good manager. He was read, so I read read a comment and I was really wondering what they meant. Sorry, and they were talking about him as being one of the next potential top class managers in the league. 
And when he joined City, I remember being a little bit annoyed at him as a, an ex-United player. I just felt like you've stopped any chance now of ever managing Man United. And you were still at that time a fairly young manager. Um, and that's why I wanted Ten Hag for one reason. One, I think he's going to be, I think he could be brilliant. But secondly, it stopped him ever managing our two biggest rivals. And it, we should, again, I, 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 I don't quite know how Man United ever meant to, like you got to remember when, when Fergie left, Man United were, were bigger and better than Man City. How we didn't work it out to bring Pep in is unbelievable. And I get Fergie kind of retired out the blue. It, it, nobody expected it. Of course, the passing of his wife's sister was a, a real issue in this. And he wanted to be, be with his wife and stuff like that. But the fact we couldn't work it out, like you think back with hindsight, could have given it to, you could have let Rene Mullenstein and Mike Phelan for one year run it, right? A, a winning team that they were already part of. They could run it for a year with knowing Pep was coming at the end of it. Like we could have done it, something like that would have been would a have lot better. Well, I, I, having said that, that would that would be the club being run well. Like, do you know what I'm saying? And we're not. So, yeah. Do you think Fergie would have actually, like, endorsed Pep, though, if he'd been asked? Because do you know what? It's, it, it's Pep, funny. Obviously, we saw Pep beat him in two finals. And do you think Fergie would be like, yeah, <laughs> give him my job? Wait, do you think just because man got slapped twice, he'll be like, oh, no, I don't want this guy. I don't want this guy United. No, 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 no. no. Roy's asking, Roy's Roy's asking a good question. question. Roy's asking a good question. There are some Man United fans who have this weird belief that Fergie picked Moyes to elevate and show how good Fergie was. Now, for me, I, I get why you. there are a very small percentage of Man United fans that don't like Fergie, and I'm not too sure what the reason is. They never go fully in because they know are going for Fergie. Like, that's almost, you take a shot of the king, you've got to hit so hard that the majority <laughs> agree with you, or you're finished in this industry. Like, you're finished out there. You can't go in on him. He's, he's a god, right? But I, I don't think, I think, I think... I don't know. This is the mistake that was made. Fergie hasn't been as involved as people make out. Yes, he's at the games and he's ceremoniously on the board. He's had no decision-making power since he retired. The mistake that was made by Moyes wasn't even Moyes being the manager. It was Moyes being allowed to clear out the entire backroom staff. And go back to Jan's point a minute ago about uh, you, all your teams play the same football, right? Men's, women's, boys, girls, all play the same. Man United had a structure where everything was cohesive. This is what Man United have done four times. We've allowed the new manager to scrap everything that's going on and start their own thing. So you've basically given the club the size of Man United to, to, to new managers five times and gone, run it how you want it to be run. So we now have a situation where our boys and girls and our young men and, and, and first team men and our first team all play different football. <laughs> it's crazy.